this build will turn Elden Ring into Sekiro. Do not be scared, it is a very tanky build, it has great stamina, high poise and incredible damage. You block 4 shots, you do 80% more damage without the build. If you have ever wanted a similar build to Sekiro and Elden Ring, or you just want a fun new playstyle to try, this is it, let's break it down. If you're a Sekiro enjoyer like I am, you will love this build. If you are not a fan of Sekiro, do not worry. You should not be scared to try deflections in Elden Ring. Trust me, the benefits are so worth it. Literally, the game is pushing you to try this. The build is very forgiving and it is tailored to make it as easy as possible. This is especially fun to try in New Game Plus. First, quickly let me explain the deflection mechanic. You are about to get hit. You block right before impact. You miss the block, no problem. The build will tank it. After a successful block, almost no stamina gets consumed. This allows you to block back to back for a very long time. After a successful block, you will negate 100% of physical damage. And I would say around 95% of the elemental damage. You will barely notice it, but the health goes down just a little bit. Since it's barely noticeable, this means you literally can block whatever the bosses throw at you. After a successful block, you will negate any status buildup. This attack deals frost, no frost for me. After a successful block, you will receive a bonus damage to your guard counter by 20%. It stacks up to 4 times, meaning you block 4 shots, you do 80% damage. That is insane. You would ask, what is guard counter? Guard counter is simply when you click your R2 or heavy right after a successful block. You will hear this sound. The weapon we will use is the Fire Knight Greatsword from the DLC. It is a colossal weapon, you can change its affinity to whatever you want. However, it will always retain its fire damage. Even it yields better damage if you lean into the fire. It deals pierce damage that is awesome for two reasons. One, a lot of enemies are weak to pierce. Two, every thrusting weapon benefits from a passive 30% damage to counter attacks. This means that attacking an enemy while they are in the middle of an attack you deal 30% more damage that is just free the weapon also has great range it is very much needed for a guard counter build it deals 40 poise damage with a charge heavy it is very solid to poise break bosses very often you will be surprised with this information let's get to the build Our build is tanky, in case you miss a deflect. It has great stamina, in case you miss a deflect. It has high poise, so you are not interrupted. It has high damage, due to the deflection system and the build. It has great range, so you are not whiffing shots after a deflection. It is a perfect build to mimic Sekiro's playstyle. Let's start with the armor. The ideal armor for this is the Bull Ghost set. It is obtained through Patra's questline. It offers the highest damage negation in the game. Also provides 100 poise, so your attacks will not be interrupted. If you want an alternate that is easier to get, go for more set, but the drip is questionable, I'm just saying. Another option, if you are a Chad and want to commit to the full cosplay, you can go for the Ronin set dropped by Yuri. For the weapon, we are using the Fire Knight's Greatsword. Max it to plus 25 and change the affinity to Flame Art. This will make it scale with Faith instead of Strength. To change the affinity, you need the Red Hot Wet Blade. It is found in the Red Main Castle when the festival is not active. The Fire Knight greatsword it drops from the fire knights and it has a four percent drop chance honestly very high it can be farmed in this location right here for the Ash of War we are going to use on the weapon, we're going for the Flame Spear. It adds 95 fire damage for 40 seconds. The Flame Spear can be charged to increase the distance and the damage of the shot. Trust me, the shot can travel very far, it's very accurate. The shot will deal 38 stance damage when it's fully charged. It is perfect for those bosses that give you a little bit of space or like to run away. This Ash of War is perfect when you are exploring so that you can pick off enemies one by one without the need to deflect everything as you're progressing. It drops by the Fire Knight at the end of this bridge in the Shadow Keep. 
the second weapon, we will offhand the finger seal to cast our buffs. You can easily buy it from the twin maidens in the round table hold. For the talismans of our builds, we will go for the curved sword talisman. This increases the guard counter we explained earlier by 20% more. It is perfect for a deflection build since all of your hits are going to be guard counters. It is found in Storm Veil inside the chest in the room with the banished knight, the creep that locks you in and then does that weird laugh he 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 yeah that guy the second talisman is the two hand talisman which increases your damage by 15 percent when two handing that is straight up easy free damage it is found inside the highest structure in the temple town ruins our third talisman is going to be a utility talisman the great shield talisman it reduces stamina while blocking this is so you don't run out of stamina in case you miss a deflection or if you're in a tight spot and you just want to block all incoming damage this will allow you to block a lot more damage than you would normally. It can be found in a carriage chest east of the Earth Tree Gazing Hill, Side of Grace. For the fourth talisman, we're going for the Bull Goat's Talisman. It raises your poise by 33%. It pushes your overall poise to above 101, so you're less likely to be interrupted when attacking. It can be found in Kaelid in the back of the Dragon Barrow Cave. For the Physic, we will use the Flame Shrouding Crack Tier for a 20% boost to fire attacks for 3 minutes. It is dropped by the Urtri Avatar in Kaelid and the Deflecting Hard Tier. It is the start of the show and it lasts for 5 minutes. It is great for boss fights and for exploration. To sum it up again, successful deflections will negate status buildup, will decrease stamina consumption and give you a 20% damage to guard counters that stacks to 4 times. 80% damage. It drops from the first Furnace Golem you will encounter at the start of the DLC. Like you literally cannot miss him. The game is literally telling you, yo, try this. For the spells, we will use Golden Vow, which will increase our damage by 15%. It lasts for 80 seconds, and it can be found in the Corpse Stand Shack in Mount Galmir. For the second spell, we will use Flame Grant Me Strength, which increases your fire damage by 20% and your physical damage by 20%. It lasts for 30 seconds, and it can be found behind Fort Gale in Kaelin. For the stats, spec to 50 Vigor, 61 Endurance, 22 strength, 18 dex, and 70 fate. Don't forget to use Morgoth's Great Rune to increase your health by 25%. It gives you a big health cushion. You can use it when you need to. There are a few things to keep in mind while using this build. Time your deflections with the impacts of the hits. Just remember that it might take some getting used to. It's okay. Try to experiment. Try to get used to it a little bit. Once you find that balance, you'll find really good joy of hitting that perfect deflect and then guard count. Also experiment with what you can deflect. You can deflect a lot more than you think. You can deflect projectiles, stomps, a lot of things. And I think an important tip for this build, do not rush the guard counter hit. Wait until a boss is done with their combo. This is important to avoid taking damage and to deal more damage with multiple stacks. So just be patient and wait for every hit to land before you go for your counter. That is it for this sick hero inspired Elden Ring build. It is very fun. Please try it and let me know. If you want to see a build that turns this hammer into a DPS monster, check this video out.